Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is about a very shocking incident that has occurred in Kaduna State in Afaka, and that's specifically at the Nigerian Defense Academy. We have reports that bandits attacked the Nigerian Defense Academy, um, killed some officers, and went ahead to abduct one with uh, sources saying that um, 200 million naira is currently being demanded as ransom for the release. Um, let's invite now the PRO of uh, the a former mili a military veteran. Um, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Yes. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Apart from today. Yes, fantastic. Um, let's first get your initial reaction to this um, situation. Um, lots of newspapers have called it a daring attack. Um, some have said it's a slap on the face of the military. How do you describe it? Well, um, it's been a gloomy morning. I I was not even in a good position to accept this invitation. You know, the Nigerian Defense Academy is um, is one of the best institutions in Africa. When you come to talk about churning out of um, elite military officers, and um, it has taken a long time for them before they moved from the one, the location in the cantonment, the Ribadu cantonment, to the new site. You know, and looking at that new site, if you see around the perimeter, the also um, expanse of land being used as farmland by persons not fully uh, vetted, and the access routes to those places, you would expect that there will be an enhanced perimeter defense system. There will be a lot of technological inputs to control and checkmate illicit activities, coded and covert entrance access control systems. It's so sad that this is happening to the greatest and the elite institution in Africa. So sad. All right. Um, there is, of course, conversations about this being an inside job or, you know, um, you know, one of the papers even said that it probably was a robbery attack um, and some of all of that. Um, but, uh, Ms. Akidevia, how, how much does this really tell with regards where we are concerning security in Nigeria today? Uh, the boldness with, re, you know, with regards whoever these people are to attack the Nigerian Defense Academy, bearing in mind that the Nigerian Air Force base is about 16 minutes or less than 20 minutes drive from where they are. Um, what does this say, really, about these criminal elements in the country today? Okay, I'm going to look at it from two aspects. One of it is the unpreparedness for surprises. You know, in, in before now, long time ago, a, a military officer can sit on a place, especially maybe you see an officer drunk, even a policeman that is drunk is with his weapon. Civilians don't even touch him. They, they surround the place, they try to protect him, you know. But the loss of privileges and the militarization of the civil space, the population, has given this um, lacuna for attacks. And if you look at roadblocks, we have said that there are civilian persons around our roadblocks that help our military personnel to collect monies, taxes, levies from vehicles, and those are the people that will expose their security. And now our roadblocks uh, outposts are being attacked. When you look at the barracks, we have said that our barracks contain a lot of um, lacunas that could be exploited to attack the personnel. And today we have seen so much of that happening in different parts of the country. Now, when we look at it in the aspect of educational institutions, it has been happening around that area. Do not forget that a school in Kaduna within that fair of space was attacked. Is that not enough red flag to tell you that 
there is darkness and there are possibilities of approaching and accessing the facility. If you look at also what is happening in Kaduna generally, these things that you see are test runs. People will now try to ascribe it as uh, arm robbery, uh, kidnapping. I agree with you that there must be an activity, but the purpose is to test run our military to begin to checkmate our opportunities to overrun terrorism. And with this that has happened, if we don't allow heads to roll, especially those that are the heads of affairs that are supposed to put mitigating measures in place, then we should be expecting an attack in a high-profile institution controlled by the military in the next few times. Okay, so some stakeholders in Nigeria that have been reacting to this, especially the Northern Elders, have said that the attack on the NDA is just an indication of the failure of Nigeria's intelligence network. Do you say that's the fact? Well, you see, Nigerian intelligence network or global intelligence network are run on two paraphernalia. One of it is the use of technology, data, and all that. The other aspect of technology is what we don't understand in Nigeria. You know, we like to buy. We buy from Israel. We buy, we buy so many things for so many countries with, um, with um, uh, padded budgets. But you forget that the manpower aspect, motivating the manpower to handle the technology is very key. Okay, you have CCTV, and now you are coming out quickly, so early, to state that the soldiers that were supposed to man the CCTV, they went to sleep. When you put CCTV in place, don't you know that the men that should man the CCTV should be appropriately put in a motivated position? Then if you also put CCTV in place, don't you think that there should be panic alarm system, intrusion alarm system, in case the human capital fails? So in technology, in intelligence, you must have both of them running. Then if I have to generate intelligence, I must have gotten the trust of the people. All the people living around that area, don't they have phones? Don't you know that they relate with the soldiers that work and live in the academy, nobody picked up their phone to call anybody and say, there are suspicious movements and it is coming towards your direction. So if as an academy, are you also telling me that it does not behove on you to create an outpost for intelligence generation in the around, surrounding communities? You can open a borehole and you can put an ex-military man there to sell water. You can open a kiosk. You can put an ex-military man there to sell cigarettes or whatever. All of these activities are, will be generated towards tracking suspicious activities around the place, picking information and sending it back for action. Now, all those things have not been done. And you expect to secure a place. It's so sad. Mr. Kidevia, is it, is, it, is it that we are not aware of these, you know, these ideas? Because I've said it repeatedly that we don't, we don't lack ideas on how to solve some of the issues uh, bordering us as a country, and that includes security. Um, some of the finest um, analysts that we've interviewed, including yourself, have shared numerous ideas on what better ways that we can do, you know, uh, 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 these things. So it's not a lack of ideas. Why do you think we're not doing this? And, and is, it, is there, do you sense, you know, lack of sincerity with regards to what we're truly facing um, and how we truly are handling security in Nigeria? Is there, you know, lies, you know, that are covering some of all these things and that's maybe why the fight is, is harder to, to, to win? Well, you know, when, when, when some of us joined the army, you, you see, we, we saw a very robust and disciplined hierarchy of command. 
If you are a lieutenant today, you pass out of the academy as a second lieutenant. You can predict at what age you will become a major, a colonel, a general. You can. With your performances in your corps, if you are in the armored corps, engineers, infantry, you can predict what time you can hold a position, like a brigade commander, like the chief of army staff, you can. You can, you can, point, you can keep pointers on XYZ number of officers to say, this category of officers will deliver the chief of army staff, the chief of naval staff. But when we brought politics into the military, what you are seeing now is the play out of internal grudges. People become chief of army staff, chief of defense staff, different positions people hold, and others are retired um, and prematurely. And those ones also have their retinue of followers, patriots, and you expect these people to be loyal to you 100% because you hold powers. You see, we need to look at professionalism in all our agencies, the police, the military, all agencies, DSS, so that we can have this command and control and discipline back in space. Because I can be ready to die for my commander. When I was in service, we are ready to die for the command and for the commander. But right now, you see soldiers, officers, they are holding grudges. Why? The officer holding position might not have the retinue of pedigree to hold that position. And because of political influence, all of this has been destabilized. And we need to build back that cohesion and instill the discipline of command and control. Okay. Um, fantastic points you raised there that we'll come back to. But breaking news reaching us from the Vanguard newspaper confirms that the major that was abducted uh, by bandits at the NDA is dead. Uh, we know that um, two persons were killed in that attack and one was abducted. So the news here is saying that the major abducted by bandits in NDA is dead. So if they never really wanted ransom, what can we say about their motive for that attack? Well, um, that, that news came to me also. And um, I await two things now. I want to await the post-mortem results. Now, I am predicting that um, as an officer and in that training institution of the NDA, people sent to the Nigerian Defense Academy as serving officers to either be instructors or um, official personnel are elites because they need to be an example to the students and the people we are raising. So I can't be a major, serving major in the Nigerian army and I will be taken away like a chicken. So I expect that there might have been some scuffles, and, and I expect that there might have been some resistance. And I expect also that the officer knows that so many officers that have been taken, they were given public execution, which you guys have seen on social media. So I need to wait and let's see a post-mortem before we predict what really happened that made that officer to lose his life? Okay, so, so um, Mr. Kidevier, um, can you go further, uh, you know, and share a little bit more on, you know, what we still are getting wrong um, with regards to this, you know, fight on, you know, against insurgency? Um, is it still a problem with funding? Is it, you know, mostly just f failure with intelligence gathering? Are there spies that are in, you know, have infiltrated the Nigerian army? Um, is it, you know, a lot more than meets the eye, you know, or just lack of interest, really, to defeat insurgency in Nigeria? Well, there are a million things. Uh, like you have said, we have been talking about this thing for maybe the past two or three decades now. You know, there are a million things. And the problem I have is that when we begin to see things picking up and they will accumulate, to become a multitude of problems. We don't try to solve them easily and quickly. Now, 
look at um, the way Nigerian military veterans are treated. Some of us are not even in the appropriate ranking to be fighting for the welfare of veterans. But we find ourselves doing that because so many of our senior colleagues, where we see them living today, they are less than dogs on the streets, you know? And these military veterans that you are looking at, their children are the ones fighting in the war front, in the front lines. So many senior officers today, they were children of retired military personnel. So many other ranks, non-commissioned officers, their fathers are retired veterans, and they have seen the paucity of care for the veteran community. We kept shouting, we kept when going on protests, we kept sounding the variance and the importance of the value of the veteran community. I am placed now in so many business plethora. So many veterans have access to so many places in the forest, in the marines, in the creeks, everywhere in Nigeria, in all police areas. Have you, have you tracked up a value? Have you tried to review the importance, the relevance, and what you can achieve with implementing a veteran structure that will be commensurate to dynamics of alternative security in Nigeria. Now, if you also look at the procurement system, the procurement system takes a million years from table to table to just buy a small technology that you need. A young man in Nigeria now just made drones and he has been flown out of the country. A drone, like in sequence, can cover that NDA porous area. So we are blinded by distractions. One of the distractions is corruption, and corruption having impute in politics. Now, because of corruption having impute in politics, so many people have been manipulated. The intelligentsia, the agencies that should operate away from government to be able to apply um, protective measures, mitigative measures to the international and global insecurity situation have been decalibrated. Now, officers and men are only looking for how to build a house for themselves because if they leave the force, they are going to be begging one landlord because the, the, the pension is penury. Officers and men are looking for a way to train their children in school. There is no more free education for military personnel. Officers and men are looking for money while in service to take care of their medical care because the medical provided by the Nigerian government does not cover all the necessary ailments that a military personnel should seek and find fair treatment for. So a lot of all of these things have brought down the integrity of the military, and the military has a business arm right now. Everywhere you see soldiers are deployed, you will see them being uh, taken into businesses. They're like fish farming and protecting uh, businesses of other people. It's not fair when you leave a military man in an outpost for more than five years. He's there doing what? He has no access to his family, no access to any social life, nothing. And it becomes integrated into the community and can be compromised. Then if you look at the promotion system in the police, in the army and all of that, it is getting to who knows who before you can be promoted and deployed professionally. If you look at the recruitment system, in those days, people joined by interest, by passion, by patriotism. And your local government and your state government gives you a letter to go to the government to join the military. Right now, people are being selected. People are being nominated. People are being posted to join the military without appropriate qualification. And yet, someone in politics someone in power, someone in position 
is pushing for those persons to be taken into the military. All right, Mr. Our elite protection system. This is this is sad. yes, this is something we've been talking about uh, on the breakfast with other security analysts. So they keep talking about how. Um, one of the challenges with, with the Nigerian military is lack of patriotism, you know, among these people that are there and how, you know, this, you know, military opportunities are now basically like a job opportunity for people who need employment, who need a source of livelihood and who have political connections. How do you think we can begin, begin to plug in those holes to fixing the structural issues of the Nigerian military? Now, if you, if you go to universities, more than five or six or so Nigerian universities, they have four years program for criminology and security studies. I have asked myself, why will I do four years studying criminology and security studies if I don't have a, a, an interest in it? Now, I have asked our agency, can you go to those universities? Can you take the database? Can you send both SMSs? emails to those graduated students and catch a age bracket and ask them to come and apply for XYZ vacancies in any of the agency. You will be getting a front line of people that have bedrock of academic intelligence and practical intelligence because some of them do their IT and all those things in the DSS, in the police, in the military. Now, this set of people comes into this profession, they will immediately begin to interrogate all the uh, lacunas that are available. And if you now go back to your local government and say you are looking for people that excel in their YA, five A's, and you are bringing them into the military, you are not asking the local government chairman to give you a list. You are going to the school to see people that are interested, that have academic excellence, not doctored results. All of this will help. And we need to look for people that have patriotism. You need to pass through a litmus test to show why you want to join the military. And finally, the government itself must make it attractive. Have you seen the accommodation of the police and the military? Have you seen their take home? Have you seen the welfare of their children? Is it attractive? Then when you leave this service alive, whether disabled or intact, are you something to be looked at and say, thank you for your service? We don't have that example. So what we are doing, we are kicking ourselves in the foot and destroying our only protective measure, which okay. is the military. All right, so I want us to now take a look at something else, right? The NDA, the Nigerian Defense Academy, is the only military university in Nigeria and the first in the whole of Africa. Um, with this attack on the NDA, how much damage do you think it does to the reputation of the institution? Let's look at the traumatic situation. There are a lot of students in the academy that when they are there for that five years, they see themselves as superhuman. Why? Because to enter into that place, there is a new spirit that falls on you. Even as a student, when you go home for holidays, immediately you are coming back. Once you step into the defense academy, your spirit is reviewed and renewed to the ethics and disposition of that personality you now hold as a cadet in the Nigerian Defense Academy. What do you think will happen to their traumatic states right now? How do you think those students will be feeling that men miscreants, bandits that we call, terrorists that have decamped, will now come into the premises and those elite officers that are their instructors start killing them like rats? Their morale right now has been abused. The only way to get them back on foot is to immediately go after these bandits across the country and make a mess of them. It's to immediately refuse to be controlled by any executive order. It is to immediately walk into Zambara, Bono, Bauchi, 
place to everywhere in Nigeria, Enugu, Bayesa, that you see banditry and excesses and break it down to its knees. That is the only way you can get our cadets to believe that they are training to enter an institution that has the highest prerogative against any kind of stupid intrusion by negative elements. All right. So, okay, Devia, um, now we're at this point. You know, let's now talk on um, funding for terrorism and, uh, you know, prolifer proliferation of weapons. Um, it has been, you know, it has also come up a few times, you know, as one of the ways that this can also end. If you can cut off their funding, if you can stop, you know, their, or block their access to weapons. Um, they obviously aren't making those weapons here in Nigeria, and so they're coming in from somewhere. We don't seem to have gathered enough intelligence to have blocked that, you know. And the, the government, the current administration, has made mention of people who have, you know, so so far, you know, they, they were going to be trying some people for funding terrorism in Nigeria. But we don't, you know, we ha still haven't seen any headway with that. Um, and so, how do you think that this can help um, with the fight against insurgency? Um, how can we be more sincere with blocking funding for for terrorism and stopping the access to weapons? In fact, what you are just saying now is, is very annoying because in 2020, the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice made a public statement that from the UAE arrest of certain number of Nigerians, information reaching Nigeria has been translated into positive intelligence. And a number of people have been arrested. And there is information and evidence that these persons are connected and culpable to financing terrorism in Nigeria. And he didn't stop there. He said there are institutions also that were implicated in the culpability. And these institutions have been approached and are being investigated, interrogated, and the, the results will be made public in due time. In due time. This is going to 2022. In due time. What kind of accelerated process do you think a financier of terrorism should have once found guilty? Even if there is only a 40%, 20% culpability, what kind of body language would the government use to use that as a deterrent against other persons that have been covertly indulging in such activity? You see, when you talk about financiers of terrorism, you are talking about people that make terrorism a business mandate. And every business must pass through registration, every business must have an account, every business must have people working for it, every business must have a business portfolio. What has our agencies done? They have found out all the people and the organizations connected to financial terrorism. Now they have sent this information to the Attorney General's Minister of Justice. And it is going beyond up to two years for reasonable activity to take place, to curtail, to curb, and to penalize such persons. What else do you want us to say? Those that generate funds from kidnapping, from taxing our farmers and our headers, and all the people that do fishing in Nigeria, they pay taxes, and all these things amounts to generation of funds. We have mineral resources in Nigeria. In Plato and some other places, some bandits are doing illegal mining. Some Chinese people were caught, published and paraded on the media for supporting illegal mining and banditry. Where is that case today? What do men was caught in kidnapping, terrorism, illegal mining, drug peddling, Soldiers and police exchange gunfire for Wadume. Where is Wadume today? There is no accountability. Criminality has now gotten a field day to operate beyond the um, opportunity to mitigate 
by agencies and parasitas we have set up to help us have a civil society. It's so sad. And so, so is it then frustrating seeing that, you know, you know, from a report that we spoke about yesterday, uh, there was, you know, a very subtle amnesty being given to certain, you know, former Boko Haram leaders and ISWAP leaders and the likes, you know, and there's also talk about repentant terrorists, you know, that, you know, the government is, you know, seeking forgiveness for or who are seeking forgiveness and some of all of that. You know, the, the, how does that then make you feel? If you, you know, you have said repeatedly that we need to attack them, you know, and, and then completely destroy wh whichever, you know, every single detail of terrorism in Nigeria. Um, how does it then make you feel seeing that, you know, there's reports that the Nigerian government is uh, subtly giving amnesty to some of these people and, you know, accepting back repentant terrorists? Well, I've spoken about this before, and I insisted that um, that process is wrong. It's faulty, and it's only going to encourage more villagers to be recruited. It's only going to encourage those that are perpetrators to go to the extreme in any violence or criminality they are engaging in. So if people come to you that they are repentant terrorists, bandits or whatever. There are enabling processes. We have a criminal justice system. There are so many people that have been held for murder and today they were pardoned and come out from the criminal justice system, reintegrate to the society. So no matter the number of persons that come to submit themselves to the government, they should be handed over first to the police the DSS and the immigration. First, the immigration should find out those that are Nigerians and the laws in Nigeria will be applicable to them. Then they will find out those that are not Nigerians and the law that is applicable to a foreigner coming into Nigeria to perpetrate criminality will be applicable to them. Then you pass them through the judicial process. If there are those that were forced into terrorism, maybe they were taken as kids. So many young children were taken into terrorism. We have seen baby um, soldiers, terrorist soldiers. Now, if those ones are interrogated, they can be taken through juvenile re reshortment re in a correctional center. There must be no special treatment. Everybody goes into a correctional center comes out from the other side, either you are sentenced to death by the findings against you, or you are given parole, or you are forgiven, or you learn a trade and come out with a certificate of pardon. So by the time we begin to ascribe special attention, budgeting large chunks of money to this exercise, we are adding to the canker that we continue to destroy the precipice of security and peace in Nigeria. Um, also, I was going to ask you, um, when we look at the amount of training and skill that these um, people have, these majors at the NDA have, what then is the fate of the common man? And would you then say this then, you know, puts some logic into statement by politicians um, that we should go ahead and defend ourselves? Ah, that aspect of advisory I have coined it into community resilience. I have spoken with my friends in the security sector, Konesam Wambo, um, Abba, Kari, um, Abba and um, Kalimu. All of us have spoken about it. And we have agreed that communities should be resilient. Resilience means you put together a structure that we first eliminate opportunities from suspicious persons to penetrate. One of the easiest ways to penetrate a community in Nigeria is through religion and ethnicity. If I claim I'm a Christian, another Christian will want to harbor me. It will be sympathetic to my plight. If I claim I'm a Muslim, another Muslim will want to harbor me. We'll pray together in the mosque. And they don't take time to contain into relevance the purpose why you came into that community. So communities should be relieved, resilient. They should form preventive measures for access control, for you to be able to live there 
Every landlord should have a database of people that come to rent accommodation or flats or rooms from your facility. Communicate to the police. There should be coercion, exchanges of intelligence, and trust. Agencies should build trust. So once all of this dilapidates, then you begin to see opportunities to disrupt civil life in that community. So I will only advise that communities should increase their resilience. Come together, look for your retired personnel. Look for those that serve in DSS, police, army, in your community. Those that have professional private security practice experience. Come together, create a resilience, and help to protect yourself. That is the way I have drafted it. That is the way so many of us agree in the professional security system. So if you also look at the relationship with agency, communities should also try to fish out criminal elements in the agency and find a way to monitor them when they enter into your community. Because definitely, with your resilience system, with the inculcation of your retired personnel, you can be able to intimidate opportunities for them to disrupt your civil space. All right. Um, Mr. Kithive, um, I'm going to just ask a final question. The, the um, uh, capabilities, and sorry, I'm taking us back up, but I want you to also share your thoughts on the capabilities of the bandits that we're speaking about now. This year, we've spoken about them shooting down Air Force jets and the likes. Um, but what, you know, does this attack from yesterday show about their capabilities and what they truly, um, you know, how dangerous they currently are? Well, we cannot underrate their capabilities. These are my reasons. One of it is based on the viral videos that we have seen that show training sessions. Another of it is the opportunity of people to travel through Iraq, Mali, Somalia and come into Nigeria through Sudan, through Niger, through Cameroon, and we don't have a proper monitoring system with our immigration and border control, access control system. We don't have data control. We don't have uh, ID cards and numbering system. Our, our population check is based on the number of votes we want to derive from different communities. So we need to agree that we are facing a well-trained uh, enemy. They have the capacity to operate rocket-propelled grenades. They have the capacity to operate and use air to land and land to air missiles. They have the capacity because a lot of military people also know that we are not safe as retirees because the only strength of the military is when you are together in a team, either as a platoon, a section, a command, a battalion, a brigade, or a division. Those are your strength lines. But once you are alone in the community of aggressors, it is only your personal skills and your intelligence application that can actually protect you. So for what has happened to those military officers, it's clearly shown that they were outnumbered and they were not in a position to quickly utilize whatever survival skills that we have in our pedigree training. So these uh, enemies that we face, they are properly trained, properly equipped, and they are accepted as different fora of criminality. People come out to campaign for them that they are bandits, they are hungry. These are professional killers. People come out to, to, to pro protest against attack on all of these criminal gangs. The rival headsmen. Now, the Meheti Allah itself is saying that there are criminal Fulanis. Sultan is saying that they should leave the forest or else he will attack them. So many imams are agreeing now. The Christian, the Muslims now see that criminality is not religion, it's not tribe. So it is late for us to begin to accept this now. What we need is sincerity of government all around facetted attack on every side 
of criminality and enemy postulation in Nigeria. Roy Okidevia, a military veteran, PRO Association of Licensed Private Security Professionals uh, in Nigeria. Thank you so much for your time and Thank for you. your wealth of uh, knowledge this morning. Have a great day, sir. All right, next stop, we're turning to politics. We touched on this on the papers earlier this morning. Um, it's about the confusion in the People's Democratic Party, where it seems that two national chairmen have emerged. Stay with us.